What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Against All Odds podcast. I'm here with Jerome Kiesewetter. Perfect. The German. <laughs> Nobody's going to say it with the V, huh? No, 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 nobody. Because most people aren't fluent in German like I am. I know, you're perfectly. Yeah. Your German is unbelievable. Yeah, so Jerome is a new signing for this year with FC Tulsa. Um, do you want to give like your... Uh, your age, your playing position, and just like where you were at last year? My age, I'm 28. I just turned 28 in February. Uh, last year, I was in a Miami, and my position, striker. Striker. Scoring some decent goals in, in training. <laughs> but <laughs> If I get your assists, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll roll the intro, and then we'll just hop in right into like Jerome's full career, where he's been at, and um, just go from there. Okay, so I like to do these like podcasts by just starting back from like where you were born and then we're just going to go throughout like your youth career and kind of just go from like step to step to step, team to team until we get to like now, you know, and just kind of talk about stories from along the way. So um, where were you born? I was born in Berlin, Germany, mm -hmm. born and raised there. Um, my mother's German. My dad is American. They both met, uh, met each other when um, American soldiers came to the to Germany. Um, a while ago, 28 years ago, and uh, my dad went back to the States. He lives in Austin now, and my mother's still in Berlin, Germany. Mm -hmm. So when you were born in, in, in Berlin, was it just, did you play any other sports at all, like right when you were like a little kid, or was it just foosball, foosball, foosball? <laughs> no, it was just football, yeah. um, or soccer, as Americans say. Um, that's all. I mean, that's the European culture. You just go and um, play soccer because everybody does it. Everybody, All of your friends play um to that that was the only sport for me i was because i was pretty fast i did some track but sooner or later i had to decide when i um grew a little bit because the training just it would i couldn't do it anymore um and i decided to stick with with uh football and that was my my number one love and i think i made a decent choice yeah <laughs> good uh what, what events did you when you ran track um, it, it was called the East stuff. So I think it was before it was in the Olympic stadium. Mm -hmm. Um, I became Berlin, my age group, uh, champion of Berlin. And then I did the Germany final and I think I became seventh or so. Out of um, all of Germany. Yeah. For your age I was, group? Yeah. I was, I was pretty, pretty, Damn. pretty okay. Um, but you know, we, we're not doing we're not too fast in Germany. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, a, in the worldwide standard, I'm probably not as good as other mm -hmm. people. So, um, yeah. But I still loved soccer or football more. And I, I just said, no, nah, I'll, I'll keep on playing. Yeah. And so you must have slowed down a lot because I haven't seen any, <laughs> I haven't seen any bursts of speed <laughs> lately. Yeah, I think um, something happened after that training um mm -hmm. i just stick with my speed from that on from okay. my early age on <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's still enough for you and do you have any brothers or sisters um yeah i have two sisters in austin one mm -hmm. brother and another sister in germany okay dang so what's it like having like half your family like all the way over in berlin half in texas oh it's lovely honestly because um you can travel you see your family and everybody has like a completely different lifestyle mm -hmm. and um it's amazing to see i think for my dad too if he visits me or he visit me in germany um and i visit them in austin it's 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 a little different um, and it just gives you more and more impressions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's cool. And did anybody else play soccer with in my you? family? Like in your family, no, like no. sisters, brother? No, I put my mom on goal, so she was a goalie. Yeah. Um, but just just from our training, she, <laughs> she, did, she didn't know nothing about football. She didn't, I, I think she wouldn't take any part of it. But I asked her to go and go because I needed somebody to shoot them. Mm -hmm. You still do that in off season now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have you now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, um, so growing up in, in Germany, I mean, look, uh, what I love about like the youth programs over there is just like it's year round pretty much, right? From yeah. like what, what age were you doing year round playing soccer? Yeah, the system um, in Europe or in Germany, I can only speak about Germany, <clears throat> and the system here is a little different. But um, yeah, I just enjoyed my time. I was, it was amazing. I think it formed me a little bit. And um, I really appreciate everything um, my youth coaches, my youth academy did for me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when did you start like your first team at? Was that like five years old when you got yeah, your first team? Yeah, I was team? five years old. I played in a, or four years old. I played in a local club. 
Um, so our system is a little different. Like you can join any club if you're quote unquote good enough, but mm-hmm. um, it's it's basically you go to a small club and you just hope to get to the next one, better one, better one. And um, yeah, and from that on, you just hope to get scouted by the youth academies. Yeah, and so because I was like looking up uh, up your Wikipedia, you had like your youth club was like a Oberliga team or a regional Liga team, right? Yeah, the, the men's team is a regional or Oberliga team now, um, but they they're notorious for their youth club. Mm-hmm. So actually, you mean Hertha Zandorf, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's actually the small Hertha club. Mm-hmm. So. Um, they have a very good youth program, and but by the time everybody gets like 12, 13 years old, they get scouted by Wolfsburg. I think they have a cooperation with Wolfsburg, Hertha Berlin, and they try to get these people early. And that's also, I left when I was, I think, 12 or 13. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, from there on, it's hard for them to recover good uh, or to get back some um, good people because it's... It's uh, they 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 try to take the best players away at an early age and um, see w- where they're going from there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then you went to Hertha. Yes. Right. BSC. So, and you said you went to when you were twelve. I think I was twelve or thirteen years yeah. old. Yes. And so from like five to twelve, I mean, you were with this really good youth academy. Was it academy at that? I mean. Um, yeah, it's you just go up the ranks. So it's like a U seven, under seven, mm-hmm. and then it goes up to under nine, under eleven. And um, yeah, that's you basically play a year, and I think we always, not always, but mostly skipped a year, so we could, if you were good enough, you could play with older kids, um, and then still go to school. Yeah, it's a little different than here. Yeah, it's no, hard to, I, I it's really hard to explain for a foreigner. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I really liked it because, like, what, from what I saw, is you get like. 15, 16 year olds, like sometimes playing with the first team yeah, and, yeah. and jumping in sometimes, which I really think is cool. Cause like, I didn't have my first like, uh, experience with like actual men's team, like a, a pro level team until I was 22. Yeah. That's wow. crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's not good. <laughs> no, that's no, not that's, good at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to be really good, but my, my opinion why I like it so much is I thought I was a good player when I was 13 and then I skipped one year just one year and i played with like 14 or 15 years old kid Mm -hmm. and i was like oh these kids are so much better than me and i had to um i had to step my game up yeah i had to get used to the speed to their strength and to all that and i think that helped me to become a better player so every time you think oh i'm I'm pretty decent i'm pretty good they just send you up a level and you think oh i'm the worst player on this team i have to do something about it and that's what i think um is good in the european youth system i think when you're 17 18 years old and you think, oh, you kill everybody in the youth team, you score 30 goals in the, your season, mm-hmm. and then you go to the pros, and then everybody just kicks you around and just pushes you to the side, and you think to yourself, oh, I'm, I'm not even as good as I thought. I have to improve, I have to work on it. And that's why I think, uh, in my perspective, the European system it creates good talent. Yeah, uh, 100%. Like, I just think it's so, like what you said, I think the best way to really improve it and like adapt to the speed of play is like going head first into it yes. and like experiencing it somewhere you're like uncomfortable. And then, you know, like you have that balance of like you're scoring goals, doing well for your own age, going up, getting the taste of the next level, the next speed of play. And this, I, yeah, it's, it's awesome. So 12, 13 years old, then you go to Hertha BSC. Yes. And how was that transition then? Cause you went from like it was that like your youth club was it more of like a local atmosphere or like no it, it was a local yeah it was a local atmosphere but we always played hertha bsc before uh-huh. so they would see us playing games we were playing one division they would always become first we would always become second and um i guess they just i think my age they took me john brooks tony rudiger i think um and somebody else but the, and two other players, but they didn't play anymore. They don't play anymore. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, they just trying to take the, the what they think are the best players. And then from there on, I went to Hertha BSC. And it was a difference to me because in my I, my like starting position, I did well. And the first year, I had to improve also. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm a good player, but now I have five good players in my position. And mm-hmm. if I want to make it to the next age, because it's not like you have a contract or anything, it's just... Um, a year to year base so at the end of the season the coach will let you know yeah we'll take you over to the next age group or you don't and um if you're playing on a regular basis your chances were pretty good that 
um, you'll make it to the next age group and then they bring new kids in who they think are they could improve the team or they could make it better because at the end of the day all they care about is winning championships and creating talent and mm -hmm. um, that's what they have to be known for and Hertha BSC does a really really good job of creating talent they have a I can I can name them we have a lot of they had a lot of good players and they still um, develop a lot of good, good players um, and yeah the system itself I think it works yeah uh, and then, so like from 12 to how long were you at Hertha? Because you went all the way up until the first team. I went all the way up to the first team. And um, so I was there from like, I would say 13 till I was 17 or 18. And then I signed my first pro contract with Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. And when you were developing like from 12 to like 17, how you guys were training every single day of the week? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, we were training every single day of, of the week. And we'll play our season. So <clears throat> our season is pretty much like the men's season. Mm -hmm. You have your Bundesliga teams. Um, everybody has a, has a youth academy. And on the weekend, you play them. And that's also a step or what I think was very valuable for me to see that it's not good only good players in Berlin. Mm -hmm. There's good players in Freiburg. There's good players in um, Dortmund. There's good players in Bremen. Everybody has a good team. So... It's not like a weekend where you will, because when you were younger, we, you would, we, we would win games 4-0, 5-0. Mm -hmm. But now this wouldn't become a normal thing anymore. It would be like a 1 or 2 zero, and you really have to fight for, for a win on the weekend because, like I said, Dortmund has a good youth academy too, and they want to win too. And they take their best players out of their region, or they bring players in from Switzerland or from, yeah. I don't know, everywhere close to Germany. Um, and I think that's good because at the end of the day, you play better teams and that's that's just the way to go if you want to improve. Yeah. Were you doing any extra like training on your own? Like you said, you stuck your mom in goal and, and fired shots on her. Uh, but like, <laughs> No, nah, not really extra training. I think our schedule is pretty tight because um, the school doesn't work with, it's not like in the USA where the school works with the team. Mm -hmm. So you would go to school from like, I went to school from like eight to like two o'clock. And from there on went to training from like three or four o'clock to like, six mm -hmm. and then we'd go home do some homework and do it the next day so there wasn't really time to do some extra work it's just school and then training yeah but i mean if you're training five days a week that's like that's good i mean of i course. mean like i was on like club teams growing up that we trained tuesday thursday uh, you know and so then it, it was just like i was on my own like oh yeah go in my garage <laughs> like tra training yeah it's just yeah. different I, yeah you're missing three days of the week then yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly you have to keep up with them now uh-huh yeah. so um when you got to the first team and you made your like started training with the first team of hertha bsc how was like that you were 17 you said yeah i was 17 and how was that now playing with full-grown men and at 17 how well, was your transition that was also a big difference because you think um you like i said you think you're a good player in the youth academy but then they have grown men playing against you and it's it's a completely different level and what i also think that you know these these are experienced men and it's like a job so mm. at the youth level you still have your kind of like i would say friends and your your relationships but what I realized was at the end of the day, everybody cares about the team success, but it's a job. So it's either me playing or it's you playing. And whatever I have to do, I will have to do um, to, to fight for my job. And nobody wants to be on the, as we call it in Germany, the short end of the story. Mm -hmm. So um, you, want to, you want to be the winner and you want to be um, the guy starting in your team. Because yeah. otherwise it could go the other, other direction for your career. Mm -hmm. And when you got up to the first team you got and you made your debut with Hertha no I made my debut with Stuttgart, Stuttgart. but playing against Hertha really yeah <laughs> wow so you signed your first pro contract with, with Stuttgart yeah. at 17 18 18 yeah. 18, 18 years 18, 17, old 17, yeah. how did you why did you go from Hertha to Stuttgart how did that happen I thought I was validated in Stuttgart earlier and more and earlier because they just approached me earlier and I'm I'm a kind of a guy of, I think if you approach me early that shows dedication, not dedication, but that shows something that other people are maybe hesitant. Mm -hmm. And we always said that um, in your own youth academy, it's very hard not to make it, but you don't have the validation as a foreign or a, somebody that bring in. Because yeah. um, I think, I thought I was good enough. Um, I was, I, let's, let me put it like this. I thought I was worth more than mm -hmm. um, I was offered. Uh, not money wise, but um, just the way 
things were handled. And Stutka was just earlier, and they said, "Yeah, we really like you. We wanna, uh, we want you to join us." And I think that's that just took me to make my decision and go to Stuttgart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if you're kind of like a, an academy player, like it's hard to break that like stigma of being an academy player. Yes. Versus like looking at you as like, oh no, you're coming in as a pro player. Yeah, that's true. Um, now, when you went to Stuttgart, and you you said you made your debut against Hertha. Yeah. How did that game go? Um, we we're both almost uh, in. Rele well, we were both close to getting relegated, mm -hmm. and we both uh, needed a win. Um, I think we were 15. They were 14th or something like that, and we tied. Um, but to me, the experience, I'll never forget it. I also played against my best friend John, <coughs> uh, and <clears throat> the stadium was packed, and it was just a, a moment I will never forget. Mm -hmm. It was. Um, unbelievable for me was and that a in the bundesliga or the that was in the bundesliga yeah that was in the bu first bundesliga and um yeah it was an unbelievable uh moment for me so how many fans do you think were in there in that stadium i know i was 40 45 i think 45,000 or 42 or 42 um but i was still stadium was always packed so mm. it's germany people are fanatic about um football and most of the first bundesliga stadiums are packed i would say um, depend on yeah, depends on what they're, who they're playing, but Stuttgart has an unbelievable fan base, and I I don't know I could, can't remember a game where we're like oh there's not not a lot of fans today. Oh, we only got it's, thirty thousand yeah, today. Yeah, yeah that, that, <laughs> that's that's when it seems like oh no that's 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 not a lot, but we needed that support at that time because we were close to uh, being relegated, mm -hmm. and that's what people when people said oh we have to push the team even more and they have banners and music and everything and. Um, yeah, it was just a nice. And at the end of the day, we made it. Mm -hmm. We stayed in the first Bundesliga. And um, it was, for me, and a moment I'll never forget. Mm. Dang. So 17 years old, 18 years old. 18 years old, you had your Bundesliga debut. No, I made my Bundesliga debut later. later. I have to say that. Um, I would say, no, no, not even. Because I remember the first year I was injured. Uh -huh. um, so it took like six months of the season for me. And then to get back, um, I would think it was my second or third season when i signed with them so i would say maybe 20 okay that's, that's what i would guess um it's, it's funny because i don't know the exact time and date but i can recall the game i can recall my mm -hmm. actions and um yeah everything that's pretty cool though i mean even then 20 years old bundesliga debut in front yeah. of 45 40, which was considered fans. late by the way if you make your bundesliga with 20 you were always like oh you're kind of late <laughs> it was funny as i was gonna make that joke but i was like well he's gonna actually it will be late in germany yeah like in us if you make even your mls or even usl debut at 20 it's like damn we got a young guy a yeah. young kid yeah like i was i remember being 22 with my first like pro team training with sacramento republic and then be like, oh yeah, we got a young guy, young kid. And I was 22. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, if it was in Europe, they'd be like, what are you doing breaking in here at 22 years old? Yeah, that's a little, that's a little different. Um, the the age, the the age groups, I would say, because I remember I like, for example, Timo Vanna on my team, and he was not, he was born 96, so he had, he, so he was three years younger than me, and he had already like I don't know, I would say 50 games or so, mm -hmm. and he was only 17. I mean, he has a great career. He plays at Chelsea now. But that's like 17 is the age where you say, oh, okay, is he going there or is he going there? Did you ever think because you were a little bit late, like not getting your debut until you were 20? Like, did you ever think like, like 18, 19, they're like, oh, you know what? Maybe it's not going to pan out. Maybe I should go do something else. Um, no, not really, because I really liked it. And I thought if I don't make it in the first division, I'll try my best in the second or third mm -hmm. because I just like the sport. I just like to compete. I just like playing soccer. And um yeah, and I, I, I don't think I would just judge it on, base it on that, like, um, that type of thing that I would say, okay, because I didn't make it when I was 17, 18, I had a, I had a bad career. Some people make it earlier and don't make it ever again, and some people make it later and they have a great career. Um, but I just found it funny that they would say, oh, 20 or whatever age I was, was, was considered late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, like... I mean, were you living at 20 years old, 19 years old, where you had, did you have your own place in Stuttgart or? Yes, yes. I had my own place in Stuttgart. I moved out of my mom's apartment in Berlin when I signed with Stuttgart. So when I was 17, 18, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was, it was not a mess, but it was, 
It was a different. <laughs> Did you, were you by yourself? Did you have a roommate? No, no, I was by myself. I was by myself. So you're by- I, the, the roommate thing is only an American thing. I, I think um, a lot of, um, I would love, to, I had a roommate once, but just because we were very close and really good friends on my yeah. team. Um, but I don't, I can't even name you one guy that had a roommate in my whole professional or in my whole career when I was younger. Mm-hmm. It's either you live in the youth academy because you can, you can stay in the club. Um, it's called Internat. Um, and they have uh, one bedroom for you for every player and you can stay there but it's mostly for guys who come out from Austria Switzerland they're not born in um, in in the city the the club the clubs are in but um, mostly people would have their own apartment and stuff mm-hmm. yeah, so how was having your own apartment at 17 cooking for yourself doing all that stuff you adapt fine or um not really i would ha- i'm I, if i'm beyond, being honest i had my 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 doubts my 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 <laughs> troubles mm-hmm. um i think i could have done things a little differently back then but you're young and you don't really know nobody's holding holding you accountable yeah. there's nobody looking over saying hey clean this up do this go to bed early it's just like you you live in your dream i think i all i cared about was like going and training and I forgot like the what it takes to um, to even like make it because I could have more sleep, I could eat better. But when you're young, you don't care about that. You think, and your body takes it. So mm-hmm. you think, oh, you, I'm I'm going to training tomorrow nine o'clock. I'll be good if if I stay up till I don't know one or two o'clock. My body will take it. It's fine. Um, but at the end of the day, it's uh, I should realize it earlier that it was a profession and that it's a job. But I think uh, after a year, I, I, I did pretty well, I adjusted, and I knew what uh, I would have to change. And a big part of that, I would say, played uh, my injury. And I thought, okay, I have to, I have to focus on that to get um, back into playing, heal. And um, from that on, I, I, I would take everything very professionally. Mm-hmm. And what was your injury? Uh, I had a like stress fracture in my shin Mm -hmm. and they didn't know what it was and they couldn't figure it out. And I came back to training after two or three weeks was out again because it was too painful and then tried it again. And then they said, "Okay, well, we'll do four months. You won't do anything. Um, You'll just work in the gym and then we'll see how it how it ends up, um, how the bone recovers. And luckily, after a couple couple months, I was able to to get back on the training field and and work. Dang! So it was like four months or how long? Yeah, it was like a four month where I would only be allowed in the gym, and then for you to get your fitness and everything back. Then I was training with just a like trainer. I would say for a month or two. Oh, I would say a month. And then just to get back into game rhythm, the year was all, almost done, and I was like, I'll just focus on next year because. Um, that's not that's not a big difference if i make one game or the mm-hmm. final game and something happens again i'll just focus on the next year yeah dang yeah i mean the thing with stress fractures though it's like i feel like you really can't do much to prevent it you right. know it just happens sometimes no i i think um i also made a mistake when i was uh with hertha because i was training with the pros i was playing with the second team and because I was so young, I could also play with the U19. And we were in the um, DFB Pokal, which yeah. is like the cup game here. Mm-hmm. Uh, for the U19s, we have that in every uh, youth group. I played with basically three teams. And I, I realized I have pain in my shin. And they said, no, nah, I'm like, I didn't know. They said, yeah, you, you'll be all right. You'll be fine. So I took like painkillers every weekend or before every game, barely training. And... At the end of the season, I was like, hey, because it was only, I think, one or two months left. And I was like, I'll just go through it and then see in the off season, and then see when it gets better. But uh, my my off season was just too short. It was like two or three weeks. And when I get back, got back to training, I was like, oh, OK, everything will be fine. And I noticed I was like, oh, nothing changed. It still hurts the same thing uh, uh, as bad as it was before. And um, they realized I had a like a fracture fracture in my shin, and I have to go out. And that's that was not a good start to to join a team actually. Yeah. And I also had uh, troubles with that, but it was fine. It was all good after a year. <laughs> so you're with uh, Stuttgart for three, four years. Four years. I say with four years. Um, after my injury, I was on loan for like six months uh, to get back in 
Game Shape and, mm-hmm. f- and with my ex club Hertha Berlin, the second team, and um, so three and a half years with them actually, and half year on loan. Uh huh. How was uh like when you f- signed that contract? It was a four year contract. Like, what was going through your head at that time? Like, were you thinking like, oh, I I made it, like I got it? Mm-hmm. Were you thinking like, oh, it's just four years, or did you think like, oh, I have tons of time, or or what? Mm-hmm. No, um, I was happy at first because my my dream was to sign a pro deal. But um, the pro deal, honestly, is, is worth nothing when you're mm-hmm. not playing. Yeah. Um, because you can have a youth deal and be more successful with the pros and have a better standing than um, the, the pro deal. I think you just have to prove yourself. And, um, but to sign that contract was like, oh, uh, I, fulfilled, I fulfilled my dream. But more important was for me to train with actual pros Mm -hmm. so i remember the first time was training with the hertha pros um i was like oh this is i actually play with the uh players that i've seen on tv that i've dreamed to be and hopefully i was playing the stadium that i watched games in i remember we could be ball boys and we would have to chase the balls and give them to the players and we're like, oh my God, we're so close to action. Hopefully in three, four years, we can be that guy and ask for the ball. Um, yeah, it was just a lovely experience. That's awesome. And then um, after Stuttgart, after the four-year contract, then you went to Fortuna, right? Dusseldorf, yeah. I How was Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf? It was nice too. I loved it there. The city is very, very good. The fan base is unbelievable. We had, a gr- we had two very i wouldn't say great but interesting years so in the first year we did really well in the first half of the season we all think nothing is going happen going to happen we couldn't go up uh, and get promoted because we were too far away Uh, but we couldn't get relegated but then all of a sudden we lose a couple of games and we were in relegation zone all of a sudden Mm -hmm. five or six or whatever seven games before the season ends and then when everybody realized and we were like oh we we can go to third division it's that's not our mission this year and um yeah at the end of the season i had a goal and assist late i I won't forget that too because um that kept us also in the in the second division and from that on we just had one more game left we won that game and we stayed in the league and um yeah i was pretty happy I, I had a decent season, um, and yeah, everything went well. We stayed in the league, and then the second year, we got promoted. Mm-hmm. So it was just from almost going to third league to going to the Bundesliga well, was an interesting two years. Mm-hmm. That's, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's what I love, too, about like Germany and just Europe in gen- or everywhere else besides the U.S. in general, but like the promotion relegation is just... Yeah so much fun like yeah. I, I remember like being over in Germany or New Zealand like it, it just not getting relegated is just like winning a championship yeah, yeah it's the same thing it's I mean, so much fun it also depends on um, like what your aspiration the season is but if you're if you're a team that fights for um, not getting relegated and you actually made it it's like for Bayern Munich winning the mm-hmm. winning the title or the, the cup or whatever it's the same thing because that's the goal you have to achieve at the end of the season and um yeah i also said that i want to play it sounds stupid but i want to play against relegation one year Mm -hmm. to just see and have the pressure and see how it is because there were times where i got really tough i remember in Stuttgart, we would have to talk to the fans and stuff like this and you could actually see how important the club is for Mm -hmm. a fan like for us players yeah we know it's important the fans and we love the sport too but in germany i felt like this meant so much for the people that would come up after our games two three o'clock in the morning everybody was exhausted and we would have to talk to the fans and explain to them why did we lose why didn't we put on all the effort and we're like hey these people really care about their club and that's some things you can't you don't have when there is no relegation because yeah. you just think fans just come there to watch games and be entertained and just chill and have a good time but for them it's like a mentality i remember seeing fans with tattoos of the symbol and like uh, everything on their on their head on then their neck and i'm like hey they take this thing so serious and um, if you actually talk to them great people 
I, I can't say anything about bad, bad about them. They just have this passionate about this passion about this club, and they this will never go away. Yeah, I mean, I, even if I'd spent six months with the club in the Verbandsliga, mm. and like the just like the, uh, <laughs> I mean, we had fifty people at games, but there was like even those guys who just love the club, like yeah. they would come to the road games and, and just like, yeah. I mean, we would win. And when we uh, were fighting relegation, same thing, just so passionate. It was just amazing. Yeah. It and makes winning more fun, but losing can be, can be hard. It's harder. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Because losing. then you feel like you disappointed some, it's like almost disappointing, like a parent, like you yeah. feel so bad when you're yeah. losing and you're trying as hard as you can. And yes. they're just disappointed in you. Yes. Yes. Um, and they will call you call you out and call you some mm -hmm. names but that's that's uh that's part of the business uh i mean i love arsenal watching Ar arsenal and um to me sometimes it hurts too when they lose mm -hmm. yeah and then uh like I, even new zealand like talking about that like when i joined that club when i was in new zealand they were like look like we're our only goal is not to get relegated they just had gotten promoted and like our only goal is not to get relegated so it was kind of like that pressure of that and then at the end of the season we didn't we were like had a game in hand still and we just didn't get relegated pop in the bottle in the locker room and you're in like 10th place <laughs> yeah <laughs> but that, it's it's funny it's 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 a lot of fun that's true yeah and then so with fortuna dusseldorf you went from bundesliga down to the second bundesliga right is that when you is that what happened no dusseldorf um we almost went from we were in the second league Mm -hmm. So we almost went to the third league, but we made it. We stayed in the uh, second division. And then next year we got promoted to the first division. Yeah. And I think last year they went down. So they stayed there in three three years, I think. Mm -hmm. That's and pretty then, good. Then, yeah, it was pretty good. It was a small club. They don't have um, like the financial power as Dortmund or these other clubs. But for us, it was a great achievement, great stadium. I mean, it was, and because we didn't get, um, we were cl so close to being relegated the, the year before, mm -hmm. nobody expected us to do anything. Yeah. So we, for us, it was just like, guys, let's just have a less stressful year than last year and just stay in the league. But all of a sudden we end up, like we have a run, we end up being first. And then we said, oh, half of the year we'll probably, because we, we did this before, we said, oh, we, we're first now, but I guarantee you, couple more games and then all of a sudden we like seven eight or whatever and we kept on being first and then sometimes second first second first but the closer we got to the end we realized hey we can really make it and be back in the Bundesliga and um yeah and then we ended up winning our last game against I think the rival Nuremberg or, or the, the second place and then it was clear that we will finish the season first wow and I, I love the German mentality of like, uh, uh, if being like, oh yeah, but realistically we'll probably be like seventh. Like that's so German to me. Yeah. That's super German. That's a, that's a German thing. We're, we're very pessimistic sometimes. I remember, I remember being on my team and we were playing the first place team and I was like in the locker room, like, Vita Jung's like, come uh -huh. on, we can do this. And I'm like, oh, they're first place. <laughs> like be realistic. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, it's going to be yeah. a tough game. Yeah. We probably won't win. I'm like, who goes into a game like that? An American, you're just like, oh, we can win no matter what. Oh. Underdog story. It's just, it's, it's pretty funny. Yeah, that you, that's you, true, you said that's that. True. German people are very real. <laughs> um, and then so it walk me through the goal that you did that with Dusseldorf where you basically helped your team not get relegated that first year right yeah so what how'd you score it what was that, was that the best goal that you've scored like most emotional you think yeah I would say one of the yeah, most emotional I would probably think that was my most emotional goal mm -hmm. because um, so we were I think 17th place 17th I think we were and so the number 18 and 17 goes directly down to the third division. Number 16 goes to um, a playoff game mm -hmm. with the third division, third place. So we lost a couple of games in a row and he had to make some changes. I think some guys were injured and I used to be a winger. I don't, I don't, that's why I'm, I te I'm teaching you crosses. <laughs> um, I used to play on the wing all my time in Germany. Um, just sometimes when we had problems, I would play up top, but mostly my position was on the wing. And he made some changes, and I made my f uh, first start in like a month or so. Um, and he said, "Yeah, it's, it's." I had to make some changes. I did. I did well in practice. Um, you will start. And I was like, "Oh, this is a, a moment <laughs> that could go either we're going down or uh, it goes it goes the other way." And I think early in the game, it was before. No, I remember before the game, it was raining. I think 
they had to delay the game for like 10 minutes because the rain was so insane that we were like, oh, this, this is a perfect day. Um, <laughs> and it was just raining so bad. And um, it was so wet that people would slip all the time. I remember f I scored in like the 15th minute or so, or maybe a little later. Um, it was just a through ball from the midfield. The goalkeeper comes out. I curve the goalkeeper, go by him. Somebody runs on the line, and I'll just put it like above his his head, and he couldn't he couldn't clear it. Um, we go up one zero. Then we score again. We go up. I think two zero. They score right before halftime, so it's 2-1, and it's also Nuremberg. And then it's 2-2 in the 85th minute or so. And then I had a corner. Yeah, because I was taking corner kicks. I know he had, he changed a lot that time, and he was like, yeah, you'll take corner, kick, corner kicks. And I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> I, guess, <laughs> I guess so. And then I had a corner kick, and um, my my other very, very close friend, Alexander Marlon, he headed into a goal in like the 94th minute or so, and we were all running towards the uh, the the what do you say the corner and we're just celebrating we're like hey we just have to maintain this three two league for another one one minute one and a half and then the chances might be we won't get relegated are pretty high because nobody expected us to win because they were first or yeah. second and they were fighting for promotion and um they needed the win and we needed it too And then it was an away game. And we had so many fans with us too. I think 4,000 or 5,000. I don't know. It was packed. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, we ended up winning this game. And we were all happy because the the other opponent, opponents lost. And we made it from, I think, 17th to like 15th or so. And with one game left. Wow. So um, at the final game, we just needed a tie or the other team to not win the game. And um, yeah, we ended up winning our last game too. Dang, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's pretty sick. Uh, and then, so what happened after um, your final year at Dusseldorf? You guys got promoted up to the first division. Yes, in the in Bundesliga, but you didn't stay with Dusseldorf, right? No, um, I stayed with uh, Dusseldorf that year too, but I didn't play so much at the end of the year. Um, I had some injury problems, and we had some great other guys. Um, I have to to admit that with some great other guys that scored i mean we were winning and for a coach it's it's yeah never never time to change anything when you're winning and i understood that i mean i probably don't have any good arguments if somebody's keep winning and scoring and doing their job um so i didn't play a lot the the second part of the my second year and um yeah from there on because i i wasn't playing so much it was hard for me to to find a club that would work um, I want to do an experience um, outside of Germany and I didn't really want to stay in Germany um, and from then on I went to, to Texas yeah and so because you were what 25, 26 at this time yeah 25, 26 there's also not a young age in Germany anymore yeah. it's where like where they say oh we take a, we take a shot and see uh, how he's doing it's 26 is like oh he's kind of um, he should be an experienced leader in, in a team mm -hmm. and um yeah because i haven't played so much in the it's always what did you do lately so yeah, if yeah. even if i would have scored i don't know two years before so many goals this and that they don't really care if your last season wasn't great that's what's something that's always crazy to me is like it is so much like what it, let's see a recent highlight video let's see what you've been doing lately because it's like they you're teams forget or coaches forget so quickly about you because yeah. like even in like performing the usl for a couple of years i got injured went down to new zealand and trying to hit back up these teams or go contact an agent to get into these teams and it's like well where have you been at lately down in new zealand like we want to see you in the usl performing now right. and it was like a struggle to get back into the usl and i didn't even expect that yeah, yeah but it's, it's tough true. that's true um that's sport i mean sport can change you can be a hero in one month and then be the the worst enemy in the next month. Mm -hmm. um, that's just how the sport business is, um, and you have to you have to understand that, and you understand that more when you're in um, certain type of situations. Yeah, and then how did did you how did you get in contact with El Paso Locomotive? Like, did it was it just through an agent? Because you you said your dad's from Texas. So yeah, did my that help. Me, no, my dad is from Texas, but he has nothing to do with soccer. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's a football guy. He loves football. Um, I like football too. Um, but, um, an agent contacted me and he was like, yeah, I have interest. Um, I heard you wanted to leave Germany and you're, you're, and, um, 
I have somebody who's interested in um, in you, and he's from Texas. And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, I can talk to. Her. There's nothing I can lose. Yeah. And um, because it was from Texas, I already had a feeling that okay, this could be a good fit because I wanted to live in the states. I've never lived in the states before. And it's close to my family, I thought, but Texas is a, is a damn big state. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, El Paso, Austin, I'll be yeah, able to go there every like, weekend. I was like, all I thought was like, Germany, you take a six hour drive and you cross the whole country. Mm -hmm. And in, out from El Paso to Austin, it was an eight hour drive and you're not even close. <laughs> uh, and you're still in Texas. Yeah, but um, no. Nah. And then he contacted me. I got in touch with uh, the coach, Mark. Um, he called me. He seemed to be a good guy, which... Uh, Turned out to be true. And um, yeah, we had a good season there. I, I enjoyed being in Texas and living in the States for the first time. Mm -hmm. How Was it a big culture shock going from Germany to El Paso, Texas? Yeah, it was different. Um, I have to admit that. But um, also because it was a first year club. So the facility and everything um, had to be built. But to be honest, the, on game days, like the stadium was packed. People cared. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was because there was a Latin community and they really... Um, enjoy soccer and um but that part i was surprised but um because i was in the second division and like things were a little different um uh that surprised me um also the travel was different um because in germany you just fly a day before or drive a day, day before you just come back and our trips were already already always with um connecting flights or there's time difference and i never experienced that i was like okay so now it's an hour ahead now it's two hours ahead and that worries on your body like yeah. all these these miles you put in um but at the end of the day soccer is played everywhere so um yeah it's it's i feel like as long as you have 11 players playing against other 11 players it doesn't matter if you play on a stadium that fits forty five thousand, or if you play on a training ground with with your friends uh it's 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 still soccer mm -hmm. so um you, if you enjoy it then then that's all you do yeah and what are and your thoughts you like about the usl compared i mean obviously german soccer is especially in the bundesliga and, and bundesliga two is is very high level but what are your thoughts coming down the usl like the quality wise and the, your teammates and then playing against other teams like what you how'd you find it here no the, the the quality is is pretty good um because everybody says yeah usa is not a, a football state they play american football and but uh and a country i mean um but i found out to be that's not the, that's not truly the case I've, i think a lot of people pick up on soccer now and they take it more serious and um yeah, the teams are getting better. The talents, like you see, the U.S. players coming to Germany, younger ages, uh, younger ages, and um, yeah, I think it's improving a lot. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's good to hear. Yeah. And then, uh, what about like? Because I know traveling. I mean, going from El Paso and playing Tacoma Defiance uh, in Seattle, like that's like a <coughs> crazy long trip yeah. and other things. Was there any other weird things that you found from playing in the USL that was just completely different than in Germany? Like in terms of like. The, w the work in the gym or did you find like were there anything that, that you, yeah, you can I think, remember i think working in the gym is also uh, more common here mm -hmm. um, we didn't do too much working in the gym um, especially in germany punctuality like five minutes earlier is still considered late <laughs> that's not the case here um, <laughs> <laughs> and what else would i say food is a little bit different so they would fine you. I remember they would fine you or they would take all the fast food away. No matter if you win, lose or draw a game, if they see you eating cake or pizza or something, yeah. that would be never in the locker room. And um, yeah, I found that in interesting. Um, that's about it, I would say. Yeah, I I was like, I was just on trial with like a regular Naliga team. F FK Pyramusins mm. and like I was like one of my first trials when I was over there and then after the training they had pizza and like the quista yeah. of like <laughs> of like the different some beers some sodas in there some Rattlers and I was like like and we had like they had a game the next day yeah. like I was like that's crazy like I'd even want some because I was even just like going to be training in a couple of days but I was like this is insane to me that the like Americans love the perfect nutrition and yeah. all that stuff yeah yeah that's true that's true 
Um, but I also think that it depends on the club, on the club level. Um, yeah, I mean, no matter how serious you take, but you're right. And some some cases that um, nutrition is very very important here. But um, in general, it's a, it's still still a thing where everybody can improve on. Yeah, yeah. But there, I think there needs to be a balance, you know, of enjoying life. It, yeah, I agree. I agree. 100% I agree. You have to enjoy, but you also have to know that um, if you eat pizza every day, it yeah. won't benefit your yeah. your performance. I had some teammates smoking cigarettes before games and blowing my mind. That's a like, German what? thing, too. That's a German thing, too. I was, <laughs> but I'm also impressed and stunned by people doing that. Um, and I'm like, if I would do it, I don't know how I would feel it. But I think it's just I, what I learned about, like, players I played with that were smoking it's just their mentality is so different they wouldn't I would they wouldn't there wasn't a game where I would say ah you can see he's smoking yeah they I felt like all the time that they did they didn't run the extra mile or the extra step because they were were smoking they were like okay I ha I will have to prove these guys that it's not the point um I'm not doing good because I'm smoking and I was like always impressed yeah I was yeah. always impressed uh, but if you're a kid watching this, don't smoke. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no I, I kind of saw the same thing. Some of the guys it's that would bad. do that were just machines. Machina. Yeah, machine. They would they would call me Matt the Machina. Yeah, <laughs> Matt the Machina. Uh, but no, and then so El Paso, you had a great year. Yeah. In the USL, what, eleven goals or something. Uh, I think twelve, twelve. Yeah, I came a little late. I think I came in May or so, mm -hmm. or April. I mean, and. Yeah, I had a pretty decent year. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> so you had a good year with El Paso. <clears throat> and then were your thoughts immediately, like that whole year, were you just like, I'm trying to go MLS, like pushing up? Were you just like, I just want to play and, and perform? Or No, to me, it was the most important <clears throat> thing to play and perform um, because I haven't been playing the year before so much, as much as I wanted to in Germany. And I didn't want to take that be the be the same case so i thought okay it might be i just go to el paso to see what 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 will, what will happen so we had a great year and i said okay whatever happens happens i want to stay but then uh miami ca came and i, I was laughing because i told my agent that there's some cities i would consider mm -hmm. but i wouldn't just go to the mls just to be in the mls and into miami was one of the clubs where i couldn't say no and even if i didn't play so much just for the experience i mean obviously covid was there or still there last year um but just to the experience and everything i wanted to have and then i said thank you for everything um el paso but uh, i want to to improve and see what's what's waiting there for me mm -hmm. um and mark he 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 appreciate that and i appreciate him um letting me go and letting me try um, at the end, it didn't work out, but for several reasons, it could. You know, at, before you sign a deal, you never know if it mm -hmm. works out or not. But I'm I'm the type of guy that would say I tried it, and I'd rather try and fail than to stay in my like comfort zone. It's, I could also stay in El Paso and be like, oh, okay, I'm I'm, I'm playing here, everything is good and fine. But that comes my German mentality again that you want to compete mm -hmm. if you have the chance uh, at a higher level. And um, yeah, that's what I tried to do. Um, didn't work out as I wanted to be, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's okay with me. Um, but now it's a new year. Yeah. And then how many? Because you only got in a couple games with yeah, Miami, I only got right? A couple games in, yeah. Yeah. But how were? I mean, how was playing for the organization or training every day at the facilities and all that stuff? Did you did you have a good experience with that? And yes, I had a very good experience. Um, like the club was good. Um, my teammates were nice. I, I, like the facility was great. I can't say anything bad about it. Um, just on the weekends. Yeah. It was the only, <laughs> the only part uh, I didn't like. But, um, that, but that happens in, in sports. Yeah. And it's hard though because like if you're not playing, it's, I mean, you can be in the, in Miami, the best, like in a beautiful city with everything to do and, in, and just like with the best facilities. But if you're not playing and performing and winning, it's, it's hard. Yeah. I, I, I think sometimes people don't see how, how much of, um, of performing your job is actually being, also being happy. Mm -hmm. Like I always said to my friends or to my family, like, okay, into Miami was a great experience, great club, but 
even though the city was great and everything around it, at the end of the day, I, I'm there for my job. And if I can't do my job, then I'm not as happy as I could be. So, um, yeah, to me, it was important to play. You, you can be in the depends on the type of person you are, but I'm not the type of person that says I enjoy the city. I enjoy living there. I enjoy um, whatever is around. If I'm not playing, if I'm not playing or if I can't do my job, then I'm not as happy as a, a, let's say in a smaller town and being a part of something. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like it's, it's just so, it's just crazy how like even winning and if you have a good game and you get three points, your, your whole week or the yeah. whole next week is just every day you're going to wake up happy. Yeah. And if you're losing on a losing streak or you're not playing or you're not performing, you're playing bad the whole exact opposite the yeah. whole week is just you have like this cloud over you the entire week it sucks yes and you want to be a part of something so even if i even even if i would play in bayern munich or real madrid or whatever some people would say oh look they you, you should be happy just playing there or being in yeah. the team but i guarantee you the players on that team don't have that approach they think oh i'm i'm not happy i mean i'm i won the champions league or whatever but i haven't been really a part of the team and um yeah that's that's the main the main thing for somebody who really loves or enjoys their job i mean some characters are different but um that's my character is i'd rather be be a part of something um quote unquote smaller than to be a not be a part of something bigger mm -hmm. and then so how did you end up after that season coming to tulsa was it through the agent or uh yeah through my agent and Obviously, Mike, um, we played against him mm -hmm. uh, when I was with El Paso. Yeah, I think I, I scored in both games, yeah. Against you, us? Yeah, you didn't do your job. <laughs> <laughs> was I in the game when you guys scored against us? Yeah, we won both. Uh, I'm one, trying to remember that. 2019. It was one PK late, oh, late night. Yeah, that was yeah. at our place, right? At, in yeah. Tulsa. Yeah, yeah late. But that, yeah, PK and the other one was home through somebody's legs, left footed. Was it me? Post. I don't know. Nah, because if it was me, I, I would block that. I nah, don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't think so. I think it no, was. I'm going to have to look at that game yeah, again. Go back to, to 2019. That, I think it was. Nah, it wasn't you. It was the center back, um, the uh, tall, bold guy, black. What's his name? Cip I, Cyprian Hedrick. Milan Roberts. Yeah, one of them. One of them. Yeah. One of them. Uh, 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 yeah, and then Mike approached me early. He talked to me, I think, in September or so. We were trying to get a. Um, a loan deal in but obviously it didn't work out um for whatever reason um and then i said okay let's just wait for the next season and um so strive for greatness there <laughs> <laughs> no um yeah and then like i said before earlier um i love when somebody approaches me early because that mm -hmm. shows me uh confidence and that somebody's really interested and we had some some conversations and they were great um i think he's a great coach he's doing a really good job and he's young and young people always uh, are very ambitious um and goals and everything and that's also what, uh, one thing i love about him and i think we we have a great group together besides you <laughs> <laughs> no no i'm joking <laughs> Um, and um, I think we can we can do something we can do something good this year. Mm -hmm. That's funny because off camera you were saying the exact opposite about uh, Mike. Yeah, I know. Not <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't do me like that. <laughs> no, no. It's, it, it's so far it's been. I mean, we've uh, had three games in Texas and it was a pretty crazy trip. But it seems like um, it was a good core group of guys, and I'm excited for this season. And then, yeah, um, but it's also preseason. Preseason. Uh, yeah. I give tough. you the story of my book. Um, one day uh, last year I was. I think the one one of the best um, scores in preseason, and I didn't score one one season goal. Really? Because I haven't been playing much. Mm -hmm. Nah, that's what I was blaming for. <laughs> um, but preseason is always different than regular season. Also, I remember one year was uh, with Stuttgart, where uh, we played our final preseason game against Manchester City, and we were beating them four one. We were killing them, and we were like, "Oh, this season will be, oh, we will kill the whole league. We'll be even mm -hmm. better than Bayern Munich." What happens? We lose our first f five games. We tie the sixth. We lose the seventh. I think our coach gets fired, and the whole city's burning, <laughs> <laughs> and we're in big trouble. And Manchester City wins, I think, eight games in a row, and then 
is unbeaten for like 15 or so. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't have the number, but I was just checking here and there, and I was like, oh, that was a team we just beat in preseason, but they just turned up and we went the other way. Yeah. Um, that's why I think um, preseason is important to get your fitness and everything. But at the, at, the, at the end of the day, where the money is, is in the regular season. Mm -hmm. And we haven't talked about it too, but you've played, you've gotten caps with the U.S. men's national team. Yes. I so two, two games. Two games. I mean, do you want to talk a little bit about like playing with the youth like national team and then your transition to the full men's national team and why, and why you chose the U.S. over versus Germany? Um, yeah. I mean, I was in the youth national team. They also approached me very early when I was like 16, 17, but I didn't have my passport then. So I would have to get my passport done and everything. And I don't know, from that on, I just felt like sticking with the national team I started with. Mm -hmm. And um, I started with the U17, 18s, 20s, on 23s and the men's. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I went what games did you get in with the, the men's team? Uh, Iceland and Canada. Both wins, late wins. And how was that, like, representing the U.S.? Oh, it was great. Too. It was, I, I would say... You couldn't say even, even speak English, though. You're just standing there. <laughs> like, just no, <laughs> no, no, you can tell by my accent, but um, I'm, I'm improving my English. I'm not as good as you, but you're also not bilingual, right? Well, no, my Ger I think my German is better than your no, English. No, hey, don't do Meine it. Deutsch no, is no. besser no, no, that's than deine <laughs> Yeah, look, English. look, look, you're, you're stuttering and everything. No, 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 I'm not well, doing that. I'm, I'm rusty. Not... <laughs> oh, okay. I was actually, I was thinking about doing the entire podcast intro, like the full intro of what I was saying, all in, in, in Deutsch. I wish you would, but German is a hard, hard language. It is hard. The grammar is terrible. I know. But all I could think was like, Willkommen auch meine Podcast. Yeah. Ich habe eine Weltklasse Fußballspieler, Jerome Kiesewetter. Oh. Oh, you're doing pretty good. That's not bad. Yeah, but you still hear, you, people, German people still hear your accent. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, well, but when I'm in the thick of it, when I'm in Germany, people were like, oh yeah, so what city did you grow up at? Were you from Dusseldorf? No, no, no. They'd be like, we hear the accent, you're from Dusseldorf? <laughs> no, no, no. They'd be like, get this American guy out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to change the, the cameras real quick, restart them, and then I'm going to have some more, more questions for you. So obviously you have a very like crazy career going from playing in, in the Bundesliga and all over Germany and coming over here. What has been like the absolute highlight of your career so far? Um, I would say my national cap that was very um, emotional and very important to me. Um, because you never like, that's the end goal to make it to a World Cup or to play even for like to consider it, one of the best people in your nation. That's what it is. That that's what it was to me. That was very important. Um, the game in Düsseldorf where we didn't get relegated. Um, what else was there? I had some interesting games, but I would say those two. In my first game, of course, in my first Bundesliga game, um, my first professional goal in the second league. Um, yeah, I had some interesting moments. Yeah, that's. I mean, those are pretty <laughs> some pretty big moments. And when you played against Iceland, like where was that? Was that a friendly or what was that? Friendly, friendly, friendly game. Yeah, I wish it was a, a really a real cap. Yeah, uh, welcome I mean, qualifiers or something. But it still it still counts as a cap, right? Caps a cap. Yeah, goals cap. a goal. Yeah. Caps a cap. <laughs> that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> Doesn't matter how good or bad they look. Mm. And then what has been the on the flip side the the lowest point of your career, like the worst moment of your career? Uh, I think um, when I was injured. When I was injured and I came to Stuttgart because I had so much, um, so so many goals and so many things in my head that I wanted to work out this year and to make it in my first year and um, get my first professional like first Bundesliga game in and like I was full of energy, full of hopes, and then you're out for six months and it's just like oh I'm 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 losing a year and you it's hard when you're um, in in the athletic room or when you're just working by yourself to see the end of the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel. That's how you say it, right? Yeah. Perfect, Junga. Uh, thank you. Um, because it just gets annoying to work by yourself and sometimes you think, oh, what, what am I working for? I'm just, why am I here for? I'm just doing stuff by my own. That's not what I want to do. Um, but that's just how, how sports is. Sometimes you're injured and you have to go through it. Mm -hmm. Did you do anything like to help you in that time or was it really just grin and bear it and just get through it? Uh, mostly get through it. Um, 
Yeah, you you play pl- video games or you read, but you can read. <laughs> <laughs> I can read. Yeah. <laughs> um, good one. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, but still, the next day you have to show up to your phys- physiotherapy and you be re- and you're getting reminded of it every day, mm-hmm. and that's just a hard hard part. Yeah. And what about like, I mean, since you've played at such a high level and with the U S men's national team, and everything, but what is like, who has been the best player that you've played against or played with in your career? The best player. Yeah. And why did you think they were the best? Um, we played a friendly against Bayern Munich and I love Frank Ribery. Mm-hmm. It was just like, you see how much, not more talented, but because I think if you work hard, you can keep up with it. But how good he was was like we're just so far away that i wouldn't shouldn't even consider myself a professional <laughs> like it was unbelievable just <laughs> everything and, of course Lewandowski, but the skill set and like the like the creative part of uh Ribery's game was mm-hmm. like oh my god and he was considered at the end of his career it was like i think he was like 32 or something mm-hmm. I, i'm not too sure but i was like oh my god this guy if he's right now so good I don't want to know how good he was when he was like 29 or 28. He, that's, like I said, I didn't want to consider myself professional after I saw him playing because it, the difference was just too big. That's insane. This is crazy to think about like that you've played against Frank Ribery uh-huh. and Lewandowski. What other big names have you played against? Uh, we played Dortmund. Like I said, we played Man City. Um... The U23, because we were watching, I was talking to, I was talking um, some smack to Rodrigo mm-hmm. because we played the U23 Brazilian team and they had some talent on there too. They had everybody you know now. They had Fabinho, they had Gabriel Jesus, they had everybody you name. You name them Fred because the team is just so loaded. Mm-hmm. And um, I would say that was probably the best group of players I played against. Um, because I also like the way they play, like they seems like they're enjoying themselves on the on the pitch. They they're there for more entertainment, and mm-hmm. we, we gave them that. I think the first game we <clears throat> we lost two one. The second one we got beat. Mm-hmm. Dang! And then uh, like you talked a little bit about why Frank like Rivery was like so good, and just from like the creativity standpoint. But like and you said, you were completely off like from that. But I mean. I feel like, what do you think, like, that level? Is it just everything's a little bit better? Or, like, in the Bundesliga, you think, for, compared to the USL, is everything a little bit better? Like, what separates, in your opinion, the difference of the levels? Is it the speed of play? The physical? Like, what is it? I felt like everything. Because mm-hmm. I felt like he there's nothing he did wrong. Mm-hmm. Because he, I, you think as, oh, I look at him and I think, oh, he's a short guy. Maybe you can body him. But his... Like, how do you say the body? Um, center of gravity. S- center of gravity was so low that our strongest guy couldn't take the ball away from him because he was just, like, strong. And then sometimes I would say if you have a strength, it's either you're being strong or you're being fast or you're being very technical. Mm-hmm. And he had technical ability, unbelievable. Like, he was cutting people right and left. Then he was strong. And then he was fast. So he had everything mm-hmm. that you... If you write a book, you that's the abilities you want. Yeah. And he had everything. And it was like, oh, so is, how how can you beat him? Like, how can you take the ball away from him? It's not working. Like, we have to put on three or four guys for him to 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 win it off him. And then they have another guy, Lewandowski, who if you have three guys on him, then you need four guys on him. And that's just the whole team. Mm-hmm. And I realized why those players are at a higher level or at that level. Um, because there's only a handful, yeah, that are that great. That's crazy. And then, um, throughout your career too, like if you were to go back, if you could go back to some time, like talk to little Jerome, like at whatever age, when would you go back, and what would you say to him? If I would go back, yeah. Um, and it, would you go back to a certain time? Would you go back to like 17 year old Jerome when he first got to Stuttgart, or would you go back earlier, or, or what? Um, no, I would probably go back earlier when I was very young and, um, say to myself, good, you chose football. 
<laughs> and I'll track. <laughs> Just give a pat on the back. <laughs> Just uh, sometimes you have to compliment yourself. Um, n- no, but I mean, no, that's not. That's probably the only thing that I mean. At the end of the day, things can go left or things can go right. But I think every small decision you make um, can change your life completely. And I think that was one of my better decisions I made, <laughs> if you can say that. Um, and um, yeah, because I was close to saying, ah, I'll go to track because I was good at track. Mm-hmm. But um, and people would always I remember people would always say, what's the likely chance for you to be pro? It's there is not not even a you won't make it. There is so many people playing soccer and there is no way you'll make it. And this that's like the constant um, phrase people would say, and that kind of stuck into my head. And I was like, hey, should I really do track and be good at something I don't as jo- uh, don't enjoy as much as I do with uh, football, or should I just stay and say whatever happens if I be a fifth division player then i'd be a fifth division player and if it if not then it's fine but i think um i was you never should believe your doubters or people saying you just always should have to follow your heart because at the end of the day i said i just like playing soccer more or football more than i do track even though mm-hmm. i was maybe considered better at track because i was earlier a higher um higher rank I was not ranked the seventh best player in in Germany, but in track, I was. And um, yeah, you should never just believe somebody saying to you, do this, do that. You just have to follow your heart. Mm-hmm. That's what I would always advise. Yeah, I like that. Um, that's true, though. I mean, a lot of people always say that, too. Like, even with, like I dropped out of college, everyone's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, why are you dropping out of college? So dumb. Everything. Yeah, yeah. But it's the same thing. I was like, well, I enjoy it more than I do going to school. Like, I like it, but I just would rather play whatever level I can versus just. Yeah, I think the just the perception, like, people wanted you to be like, you should never tell them what you like or tell them what maybe they like it. Maybe mm. they like going to college. Maybe they like being a nurse, but that's not your thing. If it's not your thing, then I think you shouldn't just go that route i think if you like being i don't know if you like being out outside and planting trees then you should do that and people would say oh why do you do that that has no point and this and that i think if you like it or love it or you really enjoy it then you should just go and take this route mm-hmm. yeah and then what are, looking forward now like what are your how long do you want to play for and like I know it's so it's so hard. Everybody wants me to ask like, what do you, what's your goals or what's like, where do you want to play next? But it's so much of it is is, the, I think it's so hard to plan ahead as a footballer yeah. because you just never know, and so many yeah. things come up. I yeah. mean, you could be in Tulsa for five years, you could get, immediately go off to the MLS again or whatever. But like, how long do you want to play for? And and generally, what are your goals? I think um, I want to play as long as my body says. Hey, keep on playing. Um, I don't think there is a certain number. I mean. As long as I feel great, um, I would say I'm, I'm, I'll keep on playing. If I don't enjoy it anymore, that's probably the point where I would say I, I have to leave it. And that's, uh, that's the only point I would say I can see is being injured or, yeah, that's the only part I would say, okay, it's it just too painful to play or it doesn't make any sense anymore. But I don't see myself stopping any, any anywhere soon. Uh, and my goals, like you said, I don't, I'm, I don't think you can plan not even year to year. Mm-hmm. Um, I just want to enjoy being here, being part, creating something, and um, from there on, we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, I think, I mean, that's what I, I always think of. Like, focus on just the, this season. Like, perform, do everything you can to get on the field, perform, win, and then the better you do, the better you do now. Everything else will take care of itself in the future. You know. Yeah whether that's because your agent or whatever, but, um, and then, uh, last thing. So a lot of people, a lot of younger players watch this that want to be in your shoes, playing pro, doing what you've done, having a cap for a national team. What is your advice for kids watching this right now? Um, and not my, just kids, but even 18, 20 year old players. My advice is just working hard and believing in yourself because I think that's the most, the two most important things you can have. 
because um, you can be a good player, but if somebody's always doubting you and saying you can't do this and you can't, I know this. Sometimes it sucks in your head and you think maybe they're right, but that's not the the route you should go. Even if a hundred people say are saying, yeah, you you will never make it there. You should always. There's always guys that are. I mean, I guess I'm taking them taking Cristiano Ronaldo for example. How many people? T- probably told him that you're you won't never be the best player in the world that's impossible there's too many players playing football but somebody has to be it mm-hmm. and i think it could it could be you it could be that guy they all we all started somewhere and one great advice Jürgen Klinsmann had for me that's a german saying everybody cooks the water with the water that's translated in english is i'm cooking the same way you're cooking so i'm the, made of the same stuff as you so i can be as great as you so um, we're, we're all the same and nobody's different. Even if some players are better or worse, we're all the same. So mm-hmm. they started somehow. So can you. Yeah. There's like this one quote I, I remember reading about like, it was about an Olympian who got to the Olympics the first time. And he, he had like an epiphany moment where he was like, I realized that the guys winning gold and the Olympians were are people like, or they're just men and women just like me. Yeah. And just like he had that moment of like, this, they're nothing they're not nothing special but they're not different like what you said they're just a, a person who's had a lot of a lot of success you know yeah but if you see people on tv you always think like oh they have to be different like what why is it their life it has to be something special but then if you meet them or if you talk to them you realize it's just they bleed the same they eat the same they drink the same mm-hmm. and um they just have a different work ethic or they just have more believe in themselves mm-hmm. yeah all right, and then um, other than that, like I'll put all of your your social stu- social media stuff in the description. <laughs> it won't uh, take long. I'm not a big social media guy, but uh, what do you, you have? Just Instagram, Twitter? Uh, no, I don't have Twitter. I just only Instagram. Have Instagram. And nothing else? No. YouTube channel? I have a kid that takes. <laughs> Oh yeah, we oh, my okay. Time. Hold on, hold on. We gotta talk about your wife and kid before it ends, or else your your wife's gonna kill me. No, no, no. And she, when did, you met her in? Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf. Yeah. Okay. And then she's Polish, right? She's Polish. Yeah. And then, so when you met her, were you? How did you meet? First of all. Um. Oh, that's that's a long story. <laughs> um, social media. Okay. That's the oh, only just, time. I, <laughs> that's the only I'm not time. a big social media guy. I'm not a, <laughs> no, no, no. That's the only time. I used to be more into social media, but mm-hmm. that's the only time I think social media was worth something. Mm. For wow, me. that's for nice. Me. <laughs> that's nice. For me, no. Um, What's her name? Sylvia. Yeah. I just saw a picture of her. I don't know. I think, it was, yeah, it was Instagram. It was Instagram. I wasn't too much of an Instagram fan because I thought a lot of the things that were sh- presented to me were like uh, just pretending to be, you yeah. know? Um, when I joined Instagram, I was like, what is it good for? Somebody showed me money, cars, the perfect lifestyle, and I sit at home and I'm thinking to myself, why don't I have this? And I just felt like not miserable, but I was like, oh, look how great their life is and not realizing how great mine is. You know, I think that's some, some problems Instagram have, uh, or social media in general. But, um, the only good time I can say I I was using it was when I met my wife, but I thought she was, she had a fake profile. (laughs) Really? (laughs) I texted a girl that I was for sure had a fake profile because she was uh, looking too good <laughs> to be true <laughs> uh, and then I actually met her and um, she showed up to the wrong spot to the wrong place so I was f- even um, how can I say it was even more possible that she was fake because she wasn't showing up uh, and I was like oh something is wrong somebody tricked me what is it called in English Cat- catfish catfish yeah, yeah. I thought, ah, I got the catfished. But no, then she said, I'm two streets away from you. And then I met her and then fell in love and the rest. Have a kid, happy happy marriage. Did you have your kid in El Paso? When did you have your kid? No, in Dusseldorf. In Dusseldorf? Yeah. yeah. And how old is, is it's her, right? Is it she? It's yeah, a it's girl? a she. It's a she. She's and two and a half. Two and a half? Yeah. How's it like being a father now? Oh, it's great. I love it. Is it hard That's bouncing nice. around from place to place? Like you guys have been from Dusseldorf to El Paso. No, to- I, I actually enjoy it because my daughter sees so many perspectives. Mm-hmm. Like in Germany, for example, um, we were living and she could see the difference of, not, not that she realizes, but 
also for us that there's a difference between living in different cities or different um, countries and I hope she appreciates it when she's older because mm -hmm. um, I think if you're living in, for example, I don't know, Dubai, you probably have a different perspective of life than if you're living in Juarez. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Do you, uh, is she going to be a football spieler? She's pretty good at it, uh, but I'll let her decide. Yeah. If she, I'll, I'm not the type of parent that says because I want to, I'm a player, she has to be a one. Yeah. Um, she sees me doing it and she does everything I do. Uh, but if she wants to do MMA, go. Cool. You can do MMA. Uh, the only thing I want her to do is um, whatever sport she chooses, she has to be committed to. Yeah. Because I don't, uh, I don't think it's good if you change your mind every two weeks and say, oh, today I'm doing this, today I'm doing this. You have to find your, your um, at whatever age it is, you have to find your, your sport you like and then just um, enjoy it and be committed. But I think as a parent, you could sometimes see if your kid yeah. likes it or not, or is not really into it, and then has to try the next one until she finds something where she says, okay, I'm not, that's the same with, with uh, me and, and soccer. I said, mm -hmm. all I do is I come home, I drop my back off, and mom, you don't see me until it's it's dark outside. And then she, she thought I was crazy. She thought, what's wrong with this kid? <laughs> <laughs> he has too much energy. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. I just loved it so much. And for parents that have kids that really enjoy whatever gymnastic, whatever sport that is, um, it's hard hard to understand because yeah. my mom wasn't a pro. Like my mom was working, um, and yeah, for her it wasn't. She she probably didn't understand why I'm outside all the time playing with my ball. Mm -hmm. it is how's uh how's Sylvia do with the moving around and like and just being married to a pro? soccer she, player she enjoys it too so her story is also um an interesting one because she moved to um from poland to germany with a bag and said i want to try my luck in in germany and see really? what yeah what germany um has for opportunity because she thought in poland her opportunities weren't that great and she fought her way through it she was starting at mcdonald's to work and um yeah she got the next job and the next job and she I really, really appreciate that and really, really respect that. Like, she worked her way up, um, and now she's a great mother. Dang, that's crazy. Just going to Germany just with a bad guy, that's yeah. something that, like, just yeah. blows my mind. Yeah. Like, leaving so, all your friends, family. Could she speak German when she, she went there? She said she could speak German in her school, but it didn't help her at all. She yeah. had to use her phone to translate everything. And I was like, how Like, how did you came up with that idea? Because to me, it's... I have my, if I, whenever I moved, I had my job already and yeah. I knew like something, like I had my, my setup, I would say, like my environment, but I, I don't know if I could just go tomorrow and say, oh, I'm living in Cancun. I don't know <laughs> Spanish, but I'm, I'm moving to Cancun. Yeah. And I think, I think it's a good place to live. And I think just whatever, I will have my job there. And I really respect that. I said yeah. to her, it's, that, that takes balls. <laughs> <laughs> it takes balls. It does. That's crazy. Yeah. Like yeah, because I mean, even when I went at New Zealand or to New Zealand or to Germany, same exact thing. I had in Germany, I didn't have a job lined up, but I still had uh, a German guy who was like, "I will figure out where you're gonna stay the first couple of weeks. I'll figure out where you're gonna go. Like, I'll get the trial settled for you." It wasn't like, "Oh, I'm in Germany with a bag now. Let's go." Yeah, yeah, it's uh, and I really respect everybody who does it. Like, even if you come to the U.S. or mm -hmm. go, just go to a different country, different culture. And um, yeah, just to grind and, and, and fight. That's crazy. And then is there anything in the, this, that we've covered that like any funny story or, or that we haven't talked about or any big thing that you would want to bring up that I haven't asked about? I, I don't think so. Um, I, I'm pretty sure there are funny stories, but um, they don't pop up right now. Yeah. It's just um, I can tell you in training, whenever I have a funny story, I'll let you know. But okay. um, there are, if you go around certain pro teams, there, there, there are some funny stories you, you witness. Mm -hmm. All right. Awesome. Well, Jerome, thanks for being on the podcast. No Appreciate problem. it. And then uh, once again, we'll put all the social media, which is just as Instagram <laughs> in the description for you guys to follow. And my phone number. <laughs> Your phone number. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks for being on the podcast. The first uh, teammate podcast of 2021. The first one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hopefully not the last. No, we'll we do we'll another see. one at the end of the season and see 
whatever happened. Yeah. I'd be like, Jerome, so we're, it's now October. <laughs> you got zero goals. No, no, no. <laughs> then you can rip off my contact. <laughs> All right. Awesome. All right. Well, guys, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Like this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next podcast. Peace. Peace.